Hello, everybody, and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope we're doing well, and today we're doing a box office preview for this upcoming weekend from the great state of Texas as we are preparing for the Friday Night Tights meetup tonight. Very excited. If you're going to be there, let me know in the comment section down below. But we're going to talk a little bit about Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse doing incredibly well in its second weekend, projected to drop only 58%, while Transformers Rise of the Beast, which is expected to have its grand opening, is only going to come in around $49.5 million. So a brand new release in Transformers is projected, at least from Box Office Pro, to lose to the second weekend of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. All this while Little Mermaid continues to bleed money in pretty much every single market that it's in. And Spider-Verse is going to get very, very close to catching the movie even up to this weekend. Now, it won't quite catch it or pass it domestically this coming weekend. I do think eventually that is going to happen because the numbers and the holds have just been very good for it, not only here domestically, but also across the world. But um, again, Little Mermaid is having a decent hold projected at 40%, but because it's not doing much of anything overseas and in historical standards, this 40% drop is still not one of the better holds for any movie movie like this yeah still not looking good still looking to be a major flop for disney before any further though please make sure to smash that like button love that fire button honestly and smash the rumble button as well and also make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with the bell notification that way you know if a video or live stream goes live on the channel so as you can see from box office pro 50.5 million dollars is what is projected for spider-man across the spider-verse second weekend so a pretty strong hold there of 58 percent this film has done very impressive it will get up to 218.8 million dollars there and as you can see little mermaid which is now going into to its what third or fourth week of release is going to be around 233.8 i would not be surprised especially with the holds that we're spinning for spider-verse if spider-verse is able to not only catch up but also pass while they're still in theaters the entire uh domestic box office for little mermaid worldwide we already know that spider-verse is doing much better than little mermaid could ever hope to have accomplished and could ever hope to do Spider-Verse right now is likely going to make quite a bit of money, uh, not just in profits, but also in total box office as well, whereas Little Mermaid is projected to be one of the worst performing films of the year, especially when it comes to how much actual profit is made as the film is expected to lose quite a bit of money. Another film that I think is probably going to lose quite a bit of money is the upcoming Transformers movie Rise of the Beast. Now, this is a franchise that has gone on for far too long. We were already starting to see that with some of the other uh, films in the franchise as they were coming out, not doing nearly as well. There was this precipitous drop-off in the franchise that we saw, and I don't think that's going to stop anytime soon. People sometimes forget that the film Bumblebee, for instance, really didn't do all that well at the box office, and uh, I suspect that Rise of the Beast will probably probably also continue that trend of these films just not doing too well. It's it's sad that uh, something that I know a lot of people are passionate about, which is the Transformers franchise, has kind of just been run into the ground because of the Michael Bay uh, mindset and the Michael Bay vision of that universe and how it, it clearly has not been able to resonate, not just with, uh, with fans, but also with general audiences as well. And they've not just, they've really, you know, spent way too much money on the projects and have not made all that much in return. Uh, but the number three spot, as I had said earlier, is expected to to be uh, Little Mermaid, making another $25 million there. I honestly would be surprised to see it do as as well as that uh, because just the numbers have not been very good, um, especially if you look at the daily numbers. They're, they're just, again, still underperforming, especially in comparison to the 2019 Aladdin movie. And I think that that is ultimately a sign of where this film is going to end up. As you can see, at $233 million after a few weeks of release, that's why I think that the end domestic is likely going to be somewhere around uh, 300 to $350 million. And with it projected to do still next to nothing internationally, this film will probably come in underneath $500 million, but we'll be able to make some analysis on that this coming Sunday on the box office breakdown. Guards of the Galaxy Volume 3 is still hanging around, so has been out for much longer than Little Mermaid and is expected to have another 37% hold. So this film is still doing very, very well and continuing to add to the profits for that franchise. And again, I do think that there are some possibilities and some chances that Guardians could either uh, match that of Wakanda Forever or even surpass the entire total of Wakanda Forever worldwide when everything is said and done. Fast 10 is continuing also to have massive drop-offs. As I had already said last weekend, this film is likely going to lose quite a bit of money for Universal as it is doing 
nothing uh, domestically if, if we thought that the numbers for Little Mermaids International were bad. Uh, Fast 10's domestic might actually even be a little bit worse. Looking at some of the daily numbers, just to give, give, you, give, give a little bit of a comparison here, as you can see, Spider-Man, which has been out for five days, is expected, or rather had, this past uh, what was this on Tuesday had this past Tuesday $15 million in ticket sales whereas Little Mermaid been out for 12 days had around 6 million so not the worst numbers in the world it was actually an increase uh, from the previous day's numbers but still not all that great uh, all things considering and when you do put this up against 2019's Aladdin and you adjust for inflation you do recognize that the film has still only beaten the 2019 Aladdin film on opening day and even then, not all by that much, which is why Aladdin's entire domestic, ending around $400 million, is not going to be possible for Little Mermaid. And seeing, as I said, that it's not doing much of anything internationally, $140 million at this point in time, when you have that much more money being made in the domestic versus international market in a marketplace that is so heavily influenced and so heavily helped by the international, it's just not a very good sign. I mean, when you have any big budget film, especially when it costs $250 million, as is the case with Little Mermaid, if you are not getting a lot of money coming from these other countries, from the uh, overseas marketplace, and your domestic is doing okay, right? This is not the worst domestic box office that we've ever seen, but it's definitely one of the worst performing as far as the live action Disney films that that, that have been made. Uh, again, coming in underneath that of even 2019's Aladdin, but that international number is just downright abysmal. So again, we're not even talking at this point about not making a billion. We're not even talking this point about barely breaking even. We're talking about massive losses, upwards of 100 plus million dollars. So much so that now you're starting to see a bunch of other people, a plethora of other people, including major news outlets, talking about how this film is essentially guaranteed to flop. It's kind of insane that it's taken this long for some people to recognize that when the numbers have been in front of us now for a few weeks, but hey, at least they are catching up and at least they are starting to admit the reality, which is that this film is not doing all that well. A very different situation going on for Spider-Verse, right? Some people might say, well, wait a minute. You say that the international totals for Little Mermaid are bad and that Spider-Verse is doing better. But, you know, Spider-Verse only has $88 million there. And that is, again, that, that is a fair point. That is a fair assessment. But we have to look at this as far as comparables are concerned, right? So first off, Little Mermaid in China did barely anything. For Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, it's doing much, much better. Um, in fact, if we go ahead and pull up these international numbers just to show you a bit of a comparison, right? Right now, it's not even on their top list, right? So China's not even there. Now, for me, that's kind of a good thing because it means less money is going to support the Chinese Communist Party. However, money is still going there. So as of the last report, it had only made $3.8 million in China. So again, comparing different markets together... Not a very good look. If you look at the opening weekend, let's go ahead and try and actually make a comparison here to see, right? So for Mexico, opening weekend for uh, the Miles Morales movie, we have the uh, Mexico opening to $8 million. Sorry, uh, for Little Mermaid, it was opening up to $8 million for the film Across the Spider-Verse. If we look to Mexico, it was actually making eight, or rather $11.7 million. So a much stronger opening weekend there than it had been for The Little Mermaid. Um, looking at The Little Mermaid's top market, which would actually be the UK. So there it's made $20 million. If we look at its opening weekend, it made around $6 million in the United Kingdom, whereas it's very similar numbers here to what we saw with the other comparison with Mexico, $11.4 million. So the film, Spider-Verse, is doing better internationally because, as you can see in these markets, including the best market for The Mermaid, it has made that much more money. And if it c continues those trends, we're going to see it cross internationally and pass Little Mermaid internationally probably even a lot sooner than domestically. The film is just doing better on all fronts. And so I would not be surprised to see Spider-Verse able to end well north of $500 million. In my initial projections, uh, this is something that I was able to break down in my chart that most films actually make about a third of their entire box office in their first week, in their opening weekend, in their global opening weekend. And again, that's not a universal rule, but it is an average. And so if we play that out, taking the $200 million or so that was made by Spider-Verse in its opening weekend, saying the film will get to $600 plus million is actually very realistic. And the numbers and the daily performances of the film seem to be indicating that, that point, that the film will end up doing quite well. And on a $100 million budget, which is you know, more than 
half of what was uh, made, or rather half of what was spent on Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid cost 250, Spider-Verse only cost $100 million. When you have that much of a discrepancy there, not only do you have a stronger box office, that means, hey, you're gonna have actual profits, right? This movie is getting to the point now where, again, the, the basic, the bare minimum break even for a film like Spider-Verse is around $250 million, and that film will easily get to that maybe even before this coming weekend because we don't have the updated international numbers there. So yeah, very strong numbers here for Spider-Verse. You know, whether you like the film or not, fact is this film is going to be hitting profits this weekend and probably is going to make quite a bit, uh, maybe even close to 100 plus million dollars in net gain profits when all is said and done, which, hey, that means it pays for the budget for the next, uh, you know, whatever film they decide to make. Obviously, we know that Beyond the Spider-Verse is already in production, already in the works, uh, whereas any future productions, hey, kind of, uh, you know, having these numbers as they are right now, very, very good sign early on. Whereas for Little Mermaid and for other films like this from Disney, yeah, it's going to be very hard for them to justify spending any kind of money on these movies when they're not only not making money, but they're not doing much of anything as far as box office is concerned. But those are the numbers as they stand. The big news, of course, though, is Transformers, uh, as that is the upcoming weekend, uh, you know, opening the new movie for this upcoming weekend. So it is expected to make $155 million globally. And so some might say, OK, yeah, it's not expected to do a whole lot domestically, but internationally, it seems like it's going to be showing up. But remember, this is a very similar story to what we saw with Fast 10. Fast 10 had a very strong start internationally, but then had the typical drops that you tend to see. And because it's domestic uh, showing was next to nothing and its international was not record breaking, then Fast 10 is on its way to losing money. I would not be surprised to see Rise of the Beast also be in a similar situation in same territory. But those are the numbers. Let me know your thoughts uh, in the comment section down below. Do you think Transformers Rise of the Beast is going to be any good? I think Az was actually able to see it a little bit earlier since he's, you know, further along than we are in the timeline. And uh, he said it was awful. So I, I think that you're probably going to see people who are fans of the franchise or or at least fans of the original, uh, you know, animated so, animated show and everything else right and you know it that's a part of that uh coming out to you know be critical of the film uh, based on what i'm seeing i don't think general audiences are really going to be drawn to it especially since they kind of got you know overdone and overplayed with all of the other michael bay ones that came out and then i know some people really like bumblebee but if we're honest about bumblebee bumblebee bumblebee's story sucked right some people might like it because they really enjoyed how the character was designed they really enjoyed how they were able to get that right it seemed but the story in general was not very good whatsoever and i think the box office also kind of showcase that as people were kind of done with that movie and with that franchise but hey if you're excited about this film let me know in the comments section below and also what do you think is going to be the final difference between little mermaid and spider-verse i think little mermaid probably ending you know worldwide between 400 and 500 million dollars spider-verse i could see it going 600 plus million when all is said and done so let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section down below if you like this video smash that like button not that fire button Aussie. smash the rumble button you're all amazing and beautiful people please let me know in the comment section if you're going to be at the friday night tights meetup tonight i don't know if i'm going to be doing anything else other than of course friday night tights on friday um, but if there's anything else going on i will try to keep y'all posted on social media so make sure you follow me on twitter at omb reviews you guys are all amazing and beautiful people hope you have a wonderful rest of your day a blessed feast of corpus christi and as always god bless And now for a huge special shout out to all of my June Patreon subscribe star and locals members at the Keeper of the Bifrost level and above. Starting off first with Patreon, Father Luca Illich, Jaime Irie Hymason, Garrett Searles, Joe Horn, Jonathan Carney, Orange Hat Reviews, you can check it over at his YouTube channel, Orange Hat Reviews, Laura, the Modern Major General Story, Rosetta Allen, who you can check it at her YouTube channel of Eagle Rider, and Miss Martin Muses, who you can check it at her YouTube channel by the same name as well. Also to my subscribe star peeps, Matt317, check out his Twitch channel by the same name, Fast Reaction, The R, Mr. Roy, J-Rod, The Beer Guru, and ZK Man, who you can check out over at xtheboundaries.co. And lastly, to my locals members, Miss Minnesota hockey fan, how about a hockey player? J.H. Schwalbach and Robert Barnes, the amazing lawyer. And again, thank you all very much for being my supporters. If you want your name, shout out at the end of every live stream and every video. Check out the top link in the video description below. You also can get access to things like a giveaway channel where I give away Blu-rays, 4K steelbooks, all kinds of stuff every single, um, you know, every, you know, most weeks in the month, I try to give away something or at the very least towards the end of the month.
the month, I will make it up with several giveaways. Basically, most people are guaranteed to walk away with something uh, at the end of every single month. So if you want access to that, again, check out the top link in the video description below, as well as access to an exclusive podcast. This past month, I was actually able to record a uh, great podcast with Michelle from Force of Light Entertainment. So if you want access to that and also a plethora of other content, check out the link in the video description below. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people who have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless.